Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft on Tracks. Today I plan on talking about some different accessories that I have as well as some modifications that I have made to the chair. So stick around. Alright, the very first modification I ever made to this chair was when I was actually at the spring gathering this year, which is where I got the chair. John McCann noticed that the tank didn't have any sort of cup holder or anything like that so the very first thing he did was snatch a GSI cup off his table rip the handles off grab some duct tape and I think it was like a coat hanger that he had holding one of his t-shirts up on his tent there that he was selling from and he took this GSI cup and and fashioned basically a uh, impromptu cup holder and that's what I carried my Nalgene bottle in for the rest of the uh, gathering just so I had something to drink right there at hand I carried some Gatorade and stuff around in it um, later while I was there uh, Brandon from Shark Tack decided that he needed to uh, revamp it and kind of beef it up a little bit so what he did was take his uh, thickest Kydex that he had on him and he just simply heated it in his oven and wrapped it around this frame here and made one piece that came around and it bolts right here and then he made a second piece that wraps around the cup itself and is held in place with two bolts here so this thing does have some flex it does have some give if I was to rub against something um, but it's solid this kydex is not going to break it's it's pretty much bulletproof um, the original plan and this is kind of the first set of modification so I got a, got a little more things to do to it but the original idea was for this cup to be able to be pressed from the bottom and to be able to pop out of the actual container itself of the kydex in order for it to be used as a, uh, a have a bale on it and be used for boiling and cooking and things of that nature but as of right now it's a fixed unit of course I could just undo the screws here um, and take this band off and I have a metal container uh, readily available always here on my tank I never take this off so this is uh, basically my cup holder for the tank. And this was the very first modification. First by John McCann and second by Brandon at Shark Tack. Uh, All right, next up on the list of modifications that I've added to the chair are these side panels. They're made from very, very strong plexiglass. And I just have them zip tied on at five or six different locations. So if need be in the bush for some reason, I needed these to come off or if I needed them for some project or something that I was using in a self-reliant situation I can just cut the plastic zip ties and the panels will come right off. You've seen these panels in the very first episode they were clear at the time I've now painted them black as you can see and I've added some logos stickers from companies that are sponsoring me and companies that I support. The need for these panels came into place after a few trips into the bush I was having sticks and limbs and things come through these side panels and one time in particular I was climbing up over a log and once you kind of get going on that there's no real stop and you kind of got to carry on through it I had a limb come through and really almost impale me in the in the rib cage so I wanted to put these panels on here to protect myself from being injured in any way from sticks and woods and things like that coming through the chair has several attachment points I'm all around on both sides and on the back of the chair. These points are designed for accessories offered by the manufacturers, whether it be headlights, um, tackle boxes on the side, a, a fishing pole holder, a gun scabbard for one of the side mounts. The, comp the manufacturer offers several different accessories that can be added to all these different mounting points. And these mounting points are basically just square tubing that has been welded to the frame. And with the use of these, I'm going to be making accessories and modifications and attachments that go onto these various attachment points. Like I said, there's two on both the left and two on the right side of the chair. And there are a total of three on the back side of the chair here. On top, you have two on this back rail here, and on the top of the chair, there's one more point, of which I have a solar panel. 
a lot of people have been suggesting I need to get a solar panel and this that and the other and this is actually was given to me at the gathering by Habilis and also by uh, Chris Prevet. This solar panel is a military grade solar panel. It's called a solargizer. It measures five and a half inches by four and a half inches, the actual panel itself. It is weatherproof and it has a 10 year limited warranty. The solar panel is designed or is used, from my understanding, to be mounted on Humvees over in Iraq and it basically just keeps a trickle charge on the batteries to keep the battery life up. This is a 24 volt, which is very important, it is a 24 volt solar panel. So because my chair is a 24 volt system using two 12 volt batteries in succession or they're linked together, basically I have to have a 24 volt powering option, whether it be my 110 charger that's attached to the chair or any type of solar options it has to be modified or be designed for 24 volt in order to charge my chair properly otherwise i would run the risk of messing my chair up or messing the device up one of the two now this solar charger was mounted by taking the mounts off a security light a motion detector security light which have ball joints was fixed to a plexiglass plate so the solar panel itself can be unbolted and detached nothing is permanent here and it has the ability to be mounted in any one of these three back accessory or mounting points so given upon whatever the sun's location is or however I would like the solar panel to be mounted that day due to the what gear I'm carrying or things of that nature the solar panel can be moved from one accessory point to the other and all the only way I did that really was to take a piece of PVC and heat it with a heat gun and just insert it into the accessory point and that molded it to the exact dimensions of the interior of those tubular accessory mounting points so like I said we basically took DC plugs that you would use for a cigarette lighter and made a frame attached to the chair that houses the solargizer battery pack here or uh, excuse me converter I believe it is for the power it also determines whether or not you know the solar charger is overcharging the batteries and has the LED indicator on the top of the panel here that shows you the solar panel is actually charging something at the moment. Being that it's so dark out right now there's not much going on to the batteries uh, and I don't have it plugged in. So all you do is you take the DC plug which my dad wired in and you pull this panel back this plug back right here on the chair and you insert the DC plug to the chair and this is just a piece of metal that we had bent and drilled and secured to the actual frame itself so now the solar panel is plugged in and in operation as soon as you get it in some sunlight it's ready to go so this is basically how the chair functions with the solar panel. The solar panel, like I mentioned, can be taken out of this connection point. It's a pretty snug fit, but that's what I want. And can be stuck in either one of the three accessory mounting points. Now, if I were actually running through the woods, I would tuck this in on the back side so this wire is not hanging out. Uh, to get snagged or anything like that. Plus you have to think my backpack's here on the back of the chair so it really does a pretty good job of protecting the cable here on the solar panel. But with the cable being as long as it is I made sure I had enough room to move it from one point to the next and still have some slack. But me being me I wanted more options than that. So the cable that came with the solar panel was actually like ten and a half feet long and it was designed obviously so you could mount the solar panel on top of your Humvee or vehicle whatever you're using it for 
and have enough cable to run down to the batteries themselves to keep them charged and keep a trickle charge on it. So what I asked my dad to do was to take the excess wire left over and to basically make me an extension cord. So basically what I have here, if I can keep from dumping everything, don't want to untangle all this wire here. I basically have an extension cord made and all that is is the same plug, female end uh, of the plug that's attached to the chair. Just made one of these and gave it a little PVC backside. So give me something to hang on to when I'm trying to plug into to it. So basically what I would do if I wanted to park my chair in the shade so I have a seat while I'm in the shade but the sun was several feet away um, out from under the shade of the tree I basically have a, about a 10 foot extension cord I would simply plug this into the port on the chair that I just showed you and then plug the solar panel into this end here and that gives me a 10 foot reach from the chair so my chair doesn't have to sit in the sun therefore I don't have to sit in the sun the entire time my chair is getting a, a trickle charge on it so just gives me a few more options now a lot of people are going to ask you know what what have you seen performance wise and the solar panel and everything like that not a whole lot um, I hope to maybe use other devices to extend my stay as of right now the chair only runs for about five hours and that is kind of dependent upon what kind of terrain I'm going over if I'm riding around in my yard it'll last a long time but when I get out in the woods and I start having to climb up over logs and go through some mud and sand and this that and the other and the harder the motors have to work the shorter the lifespan is on the batteries. Now I've been able to stay about four hours out in the woods before but it runs all, it runs quick and once the battery meters like I had mentioned before in the past episode once the battery meter starts to drop uh, it really starts dropping progressively faster. So I would like to get a better battery meter on the chair so I have a better representation of what my battery power is and some few a few other modifications to make there but that's in videos to come so the solar panel does exactly what it's designed to do it's made just to be a trickle charge on the batteries um, and I think that what it is doing is while I'm out in the woods for the most part I'm in the sun a lot and when I do stop at camp I have a perfect spot to set my solar panel um, to receive some sunlight while I'm sitting at camp it basically just gives me a little bit of an extended period in the woods and that's all I'm looking for if I were to be stuck in a self-reliant situation and I was going to be stuck in camp for days you know this would eventually put some enough power back in the chair to get me from point A to point B uh, maybe in the future we'll do an actual test we'll run the chair dead and we'll use only the solar panel to charge the batteries back up and see just how long it takes to get the to get the batteries back up to an operating level I think that would be a very interesting experiment so please keep your ideas coming um, maybe a larger fold-out solar panel would be the way to go again we'd have to try to figure out how to make sure that it would charge the 24 volt system alright guys well please keep your ideas coming I am planning on adding some more things to the chair and doing some more things to prolong my life I've looked at maybe adding a small you know one gallon gas powered generator and maybe mounting it right here on the wheelie bar section of the of the chair and maybe that would give me a long enough runtime. we have a, a harbor freight or a northern tool type store here in town and uh, I'm thinking about picking one of those up they have them for like 75 80 bucks it's not a, a name brand one or anything like that but just to test it out that wouldn't be dropping too much money um, and if it worked that'd be great and maybe in the future I could buy like a Honda or something a really nice one uh, to see if it would help any better so I, I'm gonna try to add that in to see if that would give me an extended stay out in the woods because as of right now I can stay overnight at my camp where I camp out in my woods because it's not far from the house I have enough power to get there and then once I get to camp I can move around on my own a little bit and then I have enough power to get out so that's basically all I really need it for so it's perfect for where I'm at right now but eventually I would love to be able to come go to the actual Pathfinder campus or, or school course their woods there and do the advanced classes and things of that nature to 
that would be like where my skill level is now is next would be to go to some advanced classes so to go there and be able to stay three or four nights in the woods with this chair is my goal to get to so please keep the ideas coming as far as power um, preserving and maintaining a lot I also once again real quick wanted to just say thank you to the Havlis team uh, and Chris for donating this solar panel to me it, it's awesome the community of the Pathfinder and all of the self-reliant and bushcraft people I know that are surrounding my YouTube channel and and friends of mine that I've had over the years the community that we've built and developed has just been awesome and people donating things to me to help me further this channel and to get out in the woods more has just been awesome I really appreciate it so Havlis team and Chris I can't thank you enough I'll put Havlis's uh, website to their bush tools and their knives they're great custom knife makers if you uh, would like to check them out I'll have a link in the description box for them as well as Chris's military and police website I'll have a link to that as well so thank you guys I really appreciate it all right, well, thanks again for watching another episode of Bushcraft on Tracks. I'm Tank Davis. Please subscribe and help spread the word about my channel. Thanks, everyone.